Yo, what is up guys, Dream here, and in today's video I thought I'd introduce you guys to the world of viable sextant mods and the opportunities it entails. So of course, if you've ever wanted to run a specific master on repeat, which doesn't have a scarab, or you wanted to do delirium in an off season where it's not on the map device, this is the video for you, because it's completely possible and it's right under our noses. So this video is going to be in two parts, the buying of the mods and then also the rolling of the mods if you wanted to kind of get in on that and try and sell some mods of your own i'll teach you guys how to do that as well okay so let's do the buying first um so let me tell you guys a quick story so it can give you a bit of a context so many many players are very very interested in the sextant modifier nemesis monsters drop three additional currency items this is an incredibly potent mod and people basically just want to run it on every map and when you combine it with the uh, beyond the new mechanic as well as you know obviously um delirium and stuff like that you can spew out a absolutely obnoxious amount of currency you know exalted orbs included and you can make a ton of currency so basically a bunch of smart cookies got in a room and they decided to hard roll nemesis monsters drop three additional currency items on watchstones and they'd basically just consume the entire sextant market rolling this one mod and pump the price of awakened sextants uh which are required to roll it all the way to the moon uh which was pretty interesting and it would still be profitable for them because you know it's just so good. Um, and you can see here that these uh, these kind of watchstones with the mod rolled on them are worth exalts. Uh, they're very, very valuable, which is pretty cool. Okay, so they realized though that when they were rolling these watchstones that, hey, hang on a second, you know, we're rolling these on, uh, on watchstones, which can't be traded. And we're getting all these awesome other modifiers like delirium mirrors, um, you know, legions, breaches, abysses, all sorts of stuff like that, which they could have been selling. Um, so obviously, you know, they got together and like, okay, we need to be selling these really awesome mods, like Sacred Grove. We're rolling over Sacred Grove. That's not acceptable. Uh, so they decided, though, to roll it on Cirrus Watchstones instead. So Cirrus Watchstones are pretty unique. They can be socketed into any Atlas region, unlike the Maven Watchstones, uh, and they can also be um, kind of traded, which is really, really important as well. So, uh, when they're rolling these watchstones now, they basically just buy a bunch of serious watchstones, uh, and they roll them all, and they'll now sell any of the other modifiers which might be potentially enticing to other players, because all they care about is Nemesis 3, they'll just sell the other ones to cover their sextant costs. Uh, and basically, we get to reap the benefit of all of those other modifiers that they're tossing out. Because generally, they're sold reasonably cheap with plenty of room to make some profit in. Uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of the modifiers which are really, really good. Namely, the ones which either stack with existing modifiers on the map device. So, for example, Legion. Uh, if you wanted to get the Legion Sextant modifier, that actually stacks on top of the Scarab and then on top of Zana. Meaning you can guarantee you get three Legions per map, and they all inherit the Gilded Legion Scarab um, kind of... Um, modifiers here so they all get an extra ward and they all get an extra general uh the same can be said for breach uh you know if you get the modifier which is two additional breaches those stack on top of you know the gilded breach share which is three that gives you five and then you can put another one on top uh which is you know uh six breaches per map with the uh with the, the zana modifier here so let's take a look at some of the other mods and how much they cost so if you take a look at the legion one for example uh, this is actually just a little bit more expensive than Zana uh, when you actually look at the four use here. So 29C uh, divided by four. Um, so if you are using Zana, uh, chances are you probably want to use the Watchstone as well due to the fact that, you know, it's pretty much the same price. Uh, and, you know, you can get an extra Legion, which is definitely worth your time. A Legion for 6C when you're using Gilded Scarabs or even Polished Scarabs is definitely very, very good. Now, one thing to consider though is when you're running these watchstones, which you're buying up other players, you are obviously introducing a new trade element that might slow you down. But in addition to that, you're also sacrificing one of your craftable watchstone slots for this additional benefit. Uh, so for example, if you're doing a strategy like Blight, and you know, Blight of Scarabs is super easy to get, and they're actually pretty cheap, you wouldn't buy this, the watchstone for that unless it was ridiculously cheap or something like that. Uh, because you'd be getting extra trades, it'd be no good. Um, for example, like Delirium. Uh, Delirium isn't even on the map device. There's actually no way to deterministically guarantee you're gonna get Delirium. So it's a no brainer to buy the watchstone and guarantee that mechanic. The same can be said for Harvest. Uh, obviously, harvest is a pretty rare mechanic. I believe it's it's like less than um, less than ten percent to encounter it. I believe it might be a bit higher than that. Actually, I'm not sure. 
Fair to say, it's a pretty inconsistent thing to encounter. So paying a premium and getting it on every map can actually guarantee you're going to make more currency in the long run. Uh, and it's definitely going to give you way more juice. And you can still get three uh, watchstones to uh, to play with as well. It's not going to be too much of a loss overall. And it's going to give you a lot more consistency to your strategy. And overall in the long run, it should make you more money. Um, so to kind of give you guys an idea, the Sacred Grove is also one that you can pick up, uh, which is, you know, pretty affordable generally. It, it's about 1.3, uh, 1.2x for a four use one, which is definitely not bad either. Uh, keep in mind that one good harvest craft generally goes for about an exalt, and that's, you know, not too out of the realms of possibility, assuming using your other watchstones as well. Um, the Sacred Blossom from 1T4 Mob also goes for an exalt, and it's not too out of the realms of possibility that you're going to get on average 1x per use of these. Definitely something to look into and you know maybe you should be playing around with okay another one i want to show you guys here is the delirium mirror uh, and just how insane the delirium mirror actually is uh, so if we take a look here Okay, so the Delirium Mirror ones are about 70C for four Delirium Mirrors. Uh, to kind of put this in perspective, I believe, I think, the Delirium Mirror was 16C on the map device. So that's 64C. So it's about the same cost as the Delhi Mirror on the map device was back in the day. Now, keep in mind, they have synth, uh, synced. Uh, increased um, the chance of dropping uh, delirium orbs uh, many, many times over. It's pretty unlikely that you don't get a delirium orb now from your deli mirror, assuming you did it effectively. Uh, and you sometimes even get multiple deli orbs from your deli mirror, which is completely crazy. Uh, and obviously you're getting four deli mirrors. Uh, and they also, back in the day where it was on the device, you didn't have the um, the simulacrum splinter stack size. Uh, you didn't also have um, the, 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 the Atlas passives. However, now, I believe it's actually maybe on the device. Lastly, I can't exactly remember. Um, but fair to say that Delirium is incredibly profitable uh, as long as you can get a layout that is favorable for it. Obviously, um, Creator Forces is over here, which isn't ideal. Um, but you can also just run it on Tropical and then inherit some Beyond Juice as well as Abyss Juice and maybe, you know, get a bit of action going that way. Uh, you know, obviously, there's going to be some um, things to test out. Uh, but you can definitely get a lot of powerful interactions going with the Delhi Mirror this league with the newly buffed Delirium or drop rate uh, as well as obviously there's some really expensive cluster jewels this league as well um, so we definitely recommend looking into deli mirror if you have the character that can do it uh, it's definitely you know pretty damn nice um, obviously we showed some stuff on the low end here um, you know there's also stuff like the masters like you know if you wanted to do for example i don't know um, jun i'm pretty sure she's one of uh the more expensive uh ones uh just so you guys know exactly what to type in here i believe it's areas contain um, it's kind of a weird wording. It's areas contain Jun contain. I believe it's it's something like this. Uh, it's definitely one of the weirder ways to type it. It's basically a drop down menu that we're looking for. Yeah, area contains master, uh, and it's this one here. So if you wanted to look through the masters, you can also see this. Uh, fair to say, Jun is definitely very very profitable. So she's going to be more expensive to deterministically get. Uh, but keep in mind, you can also stack this up with chance to get Jun missions. Uh, as well as obviously being in the correct area, this can also be quite powerful. Um, so yeah, pretty good there. If you're interested in hard rolling Jun and doing Jun, this is obviously pretty damn good as well because it wouldn't be this expensive if it wasn't this good. Uh, so farming Jun all day, very, very nice as well. Okay, so obviously I believe that there is also the Harbinger one you might want to look at. Uh, that one can also be quite rewarding. I don't exactly know how expensive this is, but it's fair to say that it is quite good. Uh, so this one's really cheap, actually. I'd be interested to actually test this one out myself uh, because obviously getting an initial Harbinger, uh, also making them drop more, is actually quite enticing. Uh, I'm not sure the exact value of how much this is worth, but it could be interesting to test that out as well. Okay, so we've established that, you know, obviously Watchstones and buying mods it can be quite profitable, especially if that content isn't available, like Harvest or Delirium. Uh, those can be quite enticing indeed. So what if you wanted to roll these yourself? Uh, well, basically, let me take you through the process. Uh, so in order to do this, you're going to need, obviously, a large amount of Awakened or Elevated Sextants. Either one is fine. Most people go with Awakened, but Elevated can also yield a bunch of really good results as well. Basically what these people are doing though, is they get the sextants uh, and they basically pile them up, like two or 300 of them. And then they buy, you know, five or six serious watchstones. Uh, and then they suck it in some other watchstones and they roll the highest weighting uh, modifiers that they possibly can on the other watchstones. So to give you guys an example, uh, you can come in and you can see this here in, uh, in PUE uh, DB. You can see the weighting here on the right. So this one all says 1000 and the master is all 125. So you're looking for the four, uh, the three mods, three other mods which have the highest weight. 
Uh, and I believe that actually is just the traditional monsters as well as shrine. It's not possible, I believe, to roll multiple of, this, of the shrine mods. So you're gonna want one of them, which is a shrine. And then I believe you probably want two other ones, which are like basically monster packs. And those are gonna be the best ones to block out. And then the rest of them, you're basically free to do what you want and roll away and just try and identify which of the mods people actually want and are in demand. And that'll be the best way to go about it. So if you wanted to see what the wedding of Nemesis is, it's 250. And you can kind of do a calculation here, but it's fair to say that rolling these things is pretty damn profitable right now, but also buying them is going to be pretty profitable as well. The more people that roll them, the more availability they will be, which means the more affordable they will be. And you know, the whole cycle kind of feeds itself. And the only thing that is gonna dictate how much you know profit we're all gonna be making is the price of Awakened Sextants, uh, which you know obviously is you know variable. Uh, but it's fair to say that right now, it's pretty damn profitable to do both. Uh, and you can get a lot Lot of extra juice and even some new strategies out of buying sextant modifiers on other people's stones. Another one I want to point out here is obviously the Gilded Scarabs one and the Winged Scarabs one with Saiyans. Um, so if you buy the Watchstone, like let's see how much that actually is, I'm curious. Um, if you buy the Gilded Scarab Watchstone here, which gives you three Scarabs per, uh, okay, so this one's 30, 38C, um, so 30 or 40, so 38. Um, so we got three, three scarab, is it three scarab? First three, yeah, three that's times four, uh, and then 38 divided by 12. I wonder if that's right. So 3.16 for a random gilded scarab. I have no idea if that's worth it. It's pretty interesting though. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll have to take a look actually. Scarabs, um, how much is gilded scarabs worth? Gilded. That probably actually is worth it. My God, that actually is definitely worth it because the worst Scarab is 2C. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Okay, so there's plenty of money to be made, as you can see, uh, just with that one off the end there. But it's fair to say that it might be worth investigating, guys. Thought I'd bring it to you guys' attention because it is pretty interesting. Hope you guys are enjoying the league and you enjoy this quick tip. Plenty more on the way. If you like the content and you want to see more uh, and you want me to unveil more secrets uh, as well as also bring you guys some new strats and maybe use some build advice, um, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.